So we spent $10,000 on this yurt. We had half of it saved and we asked the bank for the other half. The platform itself for the yurt to sit on cost $1,100. So I think we had around twelve to $13,000 into the build itself. We bought our yurt in 2017 from Pacific Yurts. This is a 20 foot diameter yurt. So we added some extras, including the dome opener, maybe some additional windows, and the insulation package. In 2017, that cost about $10,000. For the yurt platform, we used Pacific Yurt's uh, building plans that they provide. The materials that it took to build it according to those plans cost us $1,100. <laughs> And we were used to, to camping, uh, camping out of our car, backpacking, and so a roof and some insulation was perfect for us. We really wanted to learn on our own uh, the origins of our needs and we wanted to learn how to get water, how to provide for our heating needs, that kind of thing. So what, by starting with an empty circle that was a good fit for us. And we lived in an empty circle for quite a long time. <laughs> we were just getting creative. We, we worked with what we could find on Craigslist. There was a Habitat for Humanity Restore near us that we just used the heck out of that resource. Yeah, that's a great place to get things. It was really great for small builds because a lot of the things that were there were brand new but just left over from building projects for big homes that they just had like a hundred square feet of um, leftover flooring. flooring and you could get it for nothing and that was great. So we actually at one point did some flooring in just a section that was our kitchen in one version of our yurt. Yeah, and we got all of our cabinets and countertop uh, from the Habitat uh, for Humanity Restore. It totally got us by and uh, we didn't have to build it or know how to build it. So, you know, some free cabinets, throw a countertop over it, um, a stainless steel sink that we cut into the countertop with just a bucket underneath for, for the drain really improved our lives. Mm -hmm. It was sweet. I think that for us it felt like we were kids and this was our treehouse. We were just, and that's kind of how it looked, especially the first version, like you would come in and we built this whole big loft and had the bed right up under the dome, which was really fun, and it just felt kind of like a, a play space, because we just kept, it just felt like a really fun space, because we just spliced things together that we found to make it work. So when we had our blank, empty room, uh, the first thing we started thinking about was heating for the winter. We got a cool, old, antique wood stove off of Craigslist for about a hundred bucks and sometimes we purchase wood for uh, for the winter other winters we've harvested it all ourselves just depending on time versus money we cook on the wood stove in the winter and we bought a camp chef like camp oven propane camping oven and stove top and that's been really great. It's kind of fun to have actually to have a little oven. It's not much, but we can bake six muffins or a loaf of bread or a small pizza. And that just runs on propane and we go through a grill tank of propane like every six months. What would be really cool for our harsh winter here is with the lack of insulation that the yurt has, we've considered adding a propane um, heat source, that would give us a more stable heating. So once the wood stove dies down at night, or maybe we're away for a few days, the propane heater could, could heat the yurt and keep it above freezing. For people who live in harsher climates, um, I think that that's a good thing to think about. Additional insulation also. We're, we're still brainstorming this, but we're definitely going to add some insulation next winter. We've also thought about adding on another little room, like a mudroom or a 
Arctic entry, we think that that could help a lot. And then the other big cost that we have on our mind is electricity. Uh, we're getting by without having electricity. Learning the systems though, and we're learning how to use oil lamps and all the different um, quirks that they have. We're making candles using headlamps, but to, to cook at night or to do anything at night, especially during the winter when there's only seven and a half hours of daylight, it gets really old. And so electricity is going to be a cost. However you put electric into a yurt, whether that be running it underground from somewhere else and installing a circuit or doing solar, that's, that's going to be a huge wavering cost. Oh, got me. So to sum it up, our yurt cost us around $15,000 and that was with the basic necessities uh, we needed to start living in it and stop paying rent. Uh, we think that you could do something similar for between fifteen to twenty thousand dollars and have a very simple yurt to live in and call your home. How much does your yurt cost? It's kind of a hard question. It's kind of complicated. And I think we have an answer. Fifteen to twenty thousand. Not much. Not much. Go get a yurt. <laughs> You need some new shoes. No, they're fine. <laughs> I could probably just like sew up. Hope they last till the next Catholic uh, Roman sale. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Get you another pair. Maybe the same woman is going through the shoes at the same cycle as you are. And when she calls them done, is when I call them good. I love these. I would love another pair of these someday when these are worn out. Totally. We didn't count the cost of slippers. <laughs>